Hello everyone, welcome to CodeSpot. This is Sabarna and in today's video we will see closures in JavaScript. Closure is a very important concept in JavaScript. It is very important to learn what closure is if you want to be considered as a senior developer in JavaScript. So first let's start with what closure is. A closure is a feature in JavaScript functions where the inner function can access the variables in the outer functions. A closure has three scope chain. It can access variables in its own scope, it can access variables in the outer scope, and it can also access the global variables. Take an example right here. Here you have an inner function. This inner function can access the variable inner, inner var. It can access this variable, the outer, the variable from the outer function, and also the global variable. This is quite similar to lexical scoping. So let's see what really is a closure. Take this for an example. Here you have an outer function and inner function. And here I have this inner function which uh, adds a and b, and I have the outer function. And in the outer function, I'm returning the inner function. I'm I'm using the variable and executing the outer function here. Might so this might sound a little weird, but in JavaScript, functions can be accessed like variables. So basically, this means this. This to the variable out, I'm executing this function here, where the variable b is inaccessible. Once a function completes its execution, any variables that were defined inside that function cease to exit. So the outer function, so since the outer function is executed, the variable b no longer exists. This is where closure comes in. The inner function can access the variable of the enclosing outer function due to closure, due to the concept of closure in JavaScript. So that means the inner function preserves the value of the variable b from the outer function and continue to preserve it even after the outer function has completed its execution. Hope it makes sense. So now when I execute out here, it gives the output as 30. Now why this closure is so important? Let's see. Take this for an example. Here I'm having a, a website where I'm calculating the number of likes that website has received from a user so to do that basically i have this function called handle like where i'm incrementing the like count every time uh, every time the user clicks on that like button what problem here is that here the like count variable is a, is in the global scope that means any function can modify it in a, in a very complex application it is quite uh, common to misuse this variable since it is a global variable so to overcome that, we can use a left variable and have this variable private inside this function. But but the issue here is every time I call this handle like function, the output is going to be 1 because every time it is reset to 0 and the output will be 1. So it, the count will not be increasing every time I click, every time the output is going to be 1 or no matter how many times I click on that like button. Here we want the variable to be private and also the increment must work like it should be. So this is this is where closure comes in. Same function I have declared the variable. I'm going to do the incrementing. Uh, I'm going to uh, include the incrementing part inside a function called add like, and I'm going to return that function add like. Now I'm going to assign this to this like variable, and every time I call the like function, it is going to increment by one. So now when I see the output, it is going to be one, two, and three. So that's all about closures in this video. I like the hope you liked this video. If you did, give this video a thumbs up and uh, share your feedbacks and questions in the comment section down below. I'd be happy to answer them and subscribe to CodeSpot for more such videos. Thanks for watching.